Luke chapter 22 says, Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus. For they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priest and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. Now we'll go to John chapter 13, verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. I know those that I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the passage of Scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. Then Jesus quotes. I'm going to stop and give you a reference. He quotes uh, this from Psalm 41 and 9. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. You may have mercy on me, O Lord. Raise me up that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me. For my enemy does not triumph over me because of my integrity. You uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Now I'll go back to John 13 and verse 19. Verse 19, he says, Jesus says, I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples, they stared at one another and at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciples, whom Jesus loved, we know that to be John, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to his, this disciple and said, 
ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread, which I have dipped in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Jesus took, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do it quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as G Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. So here we have the account of Luke speaking of when Satan enters Judas. And we have the account of John's writing. And as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan enters into him. So we have two accounts, both writers writing concerning when Satan entered Judas. When Satan entered Judas, I don't know if Judas knew it or not. I don't know I don't know if tonight we recognize or identify things like this even in our own living There's a question a lot of times of what's going on in a person's mind when they start to lean toward disobedient, disobedient thoughts, disobedient acts. These thoughts of lying, deception, Thoughts of if I do this, if I do this, then I will get what I want. Thoughts of pride. This, this is two accounts. The scene is this. There's a satanic invasion on Judas and it can be summed up very simple he had a pride problem because he thought it was all about him now see most of the time we have not recognized to be the danger that that actually is it's all about me I'm going to do it. I don't care what you think. And I don't care who it hurts. Only Judas was only focused on what he wanted. He didn't care what Jesus would say, even have to say about it or how Jesus felt about it. He wanted what he wanted. He didn't care. He didn't care if it killed Jesus. The writers say Satan entered Judas. Satan enters Judas because Judas won't listen. And he's all about himself. Wow. I don't know that we have only oh, title that what it really is. Well, what he is now, now look, this is what's happened to Judas. Judas is now modeling 
saving. Now Judas has no fear of God. Look at Judas. He's been living with God. He's been walking. And he's been talking. And he's been eating. And he's traveled the country with God. But he has no fear of God. That's, that's pretty alarming, isn't it? He has no shame. Does Judas, does Judas know God? Yeah, he knows God. He knows Jesus. But he wants what he wants. And he doesn't care who he hurts. And he takes, and the, and the Bible says, Satan enters him. See, most of the time when I have thought about this, and uh, if you watch Passion of the Christ, or if you see some movie, there will be some, there'll be some dark figure. There will be some horrible, gross, but that's not true. Satan has entered him and nobody knows it but Jesus. The disciples sitting there, they don't know what has happened. This is a warning to us. Do not play with the devil. And the devil is all about our pride. We, we give place to the devil in our thinking. If we lie, we're deceptive. Only one our way. Give no place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 and 11 says, So Christ himself gave apostles. Gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Who gave them? Jesus gave them. Why? Verse 12. To equip his people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up. Until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. And become mature. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That we no longer be infants tossed back and forth by waves blown here and there and every wind of teaching by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Verse 15, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow up to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they're full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learn when you heard about Christ. We're taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. Which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. To put off new self. To put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. 
Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood. Speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. It's warning. Anyone who's been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice, and be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. <coughs> Excuse me. The devil is shrewd. Do not play with the devil. He's sly and he's sneaky. He drops hints. He operates in subtleties. He will say all kinds of things to you. How many people has Satan spoke to about you could be happier? You could be happier over there. You could be happier with her. You could be happier with him. How many times has, has Satan spoke to people and they thought, you know, I, I, could, I would be happier if I just made a move. Maybe, maybe. I would be happier if I went to a church and it wasn't so strict preaching. Judas was attracted to the religious people who had their own agenda in mind. These people that Judas is He's dealing with these people that they're religious. They're the Sanhedrin. And he's attracted to these. The first church, I called it in my, my thinking today, I, he's attracted to the first church of Caiaphas. See, what had happened, here's what happened. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, if you noticed in the reading, they wouldn't do anything to Jesus while there was a crowd because Jesus now has raised Lazarus from the dead. And when this event happens, man, people were by the mobs were believing on the Lord. And you didn't say anything about Jesus in public. Because they're, they're wanting, they're pressing in, trying to see Lazarus, who had been in the grave four days. John eleven forty five. 45, there are many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary. And had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priest of Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked here is the man performing many signs. If we let him go like this, everyone will believe on him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up, you know nothing at all. You don't realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own. But as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, but also for scattered children of God to bring them together to make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. 
Therefore, Jesus no longer moved publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a re region near the wilderness to a village called, village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it's almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before Passover. They kept looking for Jesus as they stood in the temple courts and they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests, the Pharisees, had given orders that anyone who found out where Jesus was should report it so they might arrest him. See, so... <clears throat> As I read this, something caught my eye that had never quite caught my eye. See, how can Caiaphas prophesy and be the one who will want Jesus put to death? Caiaphas, this is commentary, he says, Caiaphas was not a private citizen, but was God's high priest, and God overruled in what he, and God overruled in what he said. Caiaphas's words of prophecy were true in a way that Caiaphas could not imagine. Prophecy in scripture is the importation of divinely revealed truth. In reality, Caiaphas's words meant that Jesus' death, death would be for the nation, not by way of removing political trouble, but in taking away the sins of those who come to believe in Jesus Christ. So why did Judas go to this point to entertain to the point that the Bible records that Satan enters into him. Judas wanted, he wanted political power in the kingdom, the literal kingdom of Israel. And he thought the literal kingdom of Israel was going to be restored. And he was interested in position. Do you know what, I read this, I believe it's Isaiah 14, 13. Do you know what Satan wanted in heaven? Satan wanted position. And he was willing to do whatever he had to do to get it. And when Judas realizes that Jesus is not about an earthly kingdom, that he's not going to use his power to restore the nation of Israel, he betrays the Lord and he is the epitome of Satan. The result is that he dies attempting to hang himself. Do not play with the devil. That spirit, that spirit of pride, that's what, that's what the Bible, I believe, is revealing about what it meant for Satan to enter Judas. So there he is. The disciples can't discern it. Only Jesus knows who it is. He, re he reveals it at the Passover. I, I thought of this. If, if Satan can get to a disciple with Jesus in the room. Just use your, this is just my little Steve thinking. If, if, Ju if Satan can get to Judas with Jesus in the room, with Jesus sitting at the table, you and I need to be real careful. We, have really, we, we really need to watch ourselves. So my little thinking goes to thinking and I started to wonder as we live in the last days that precede the coming of the Lord, I, as I was meditating on this, I asked this question, 
why he chewed us the imagery of the future apostate church. Because they're religious. Is, is Judas the imagery of those who were saved but they lose their salvation because of pride? Their thinking? Or, or is Judas, is he that imagery of the religious rhetoric, rhetoric that we live in today? Mindset, it's 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 all about what I want. I got to I got to thinking about this, reading through it again and again. For Judas, it wasn't even about the money. Because the money was a part of it. But do you notice what he did? He takes the money back. He throws the money down on the floor. It wasn't, it wasn't really, I mean, it was the price of a servant. It wasn't that he sold out for a lot of money. What he had really sold out to was Position, power. Huh. Who picked Judas? <laughs> who, who picked him? Well, Jesus picked him. And Jesus knew who he was. Really, Judas is an imagery of apostasy. Apostasy is a damning sin because it's total rejection of Christ. No one who claims to be a Christian wakes up one morning, suddenly decides to become an apostate. Instead, it's a slow, gradual drift over time where the heart becomes harder and the conscience is calloused. The sensitivity to the things of God are numbed. I wondered if it will be an apostate church that betrays him again and many will go after Antichrist. In order for us to know in order for us to recognize what's going on in the day and hour that we live, we must remain full of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will bring discernment. If not, if not, you and I could be deceived to thinking this is all about us and what we want. Yeah. Micah 6 and 8, this is a good memory verse. The thought of this is to be remembered. Micah 6 and 8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly, to live, to love mercy. Listen, this is it. And to walk humbly with you. Well, I came to the church tonight believing that the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ would be present. And to remind the disciples of the Lord that the devil is on the prowl. He doesn't care who he gets. He'll get one in the inner circle if he can. He'll use whoever will allow them and themselves to be used. Peter wrote about it in 1 Peter 5. He said, to the elders among you, I appeal 
as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. Listen to this. You who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility one toward another. God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and sober. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering, soberness, self-discipline, well-balanced, caution at all times. You have an enemy. He's roaring around. He's hungry. He's wanting to devour you. Resist him in your faith. Stand against his attack. Be established. Don't move. Don't move. The devil's trying to get to you. Right. You're a target. And you and I had better guard ourselves. Come on. Look around. Look around. Verse 10 says, And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong, steadfast to him, be the power forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You and I are desperate. We don't need to just have a taste or a sprinkling or a rub up against of the Holy Ghost. We need an outpour filling, baptism running over, walking every day, tongue talking, praying to God, interceding for one another. Experience with God. That's what we better have because if you don't, your level of discernment is way down. You don't even know what's true or what's false, what's real or not real. Why do you want him? You better tell your flesh no. You better know the difference between the fake and the real. Where's the fear of God? Where is it? Where's the fear of God in the churches? I just can't do it. I'll just have to be boring and strict and handle whatever label anybody wants to stick. Doesn't matter what they say, anyhow. I need the Holy Ghost, and you do too. And I need to know the Word of God, and you do too. If the only time you're getting any words when you're walking in here, you're starving yes. the rest of the week. I'm concerned that most Christians don't even know that Satan has entered them. Oh my. Professing Christians. Let me tell you something. After the day of Pentecost, you listen to those guys were different. They were all they were all martyred, yeah. except John. Now you always you wrap your head around around this. After Pentecost, they kill every one of them. Yeah. But John, and John's left alive because Jesus has something special for him to do. Well, I'm going to tell you, as different as they were, 
You ought to be different too. That's what I brought you tonight. Do not play with the devil. Flee from even the appearance of evil. Stand with me, please.